cup last three last three and, and last three and Shabbos. Well, don't do this to me. Cup dalad gimel. Cup dalad gimel. Thing there. We say we may either we may either stuff a camel or cram it, cram it, but we not put food in its mouth. We may not fatten calves, but we may put food into their mouths. We may not we may put food into the mouths of fowls, and we may put water into bran, but we may not need it. We may not place hot water before bees or before doves that are in the dove coat, but we may place water between geese and chickens and before Herodian doves. We may cut up gourds before cattle or a carcass before dogs. But Yehuda says if it was not yet a carcass prior to Shabbos, it is prohibited since it is not something that was prepared. We may annul vows on Shabbos and we may seek release from vows for things that are necessary for Shabbos. We may stop up a window, we may measure a patch or a mikvah, an incident occurred in the days of Red Sadiq's father and, and in the days of Abishol from Batnas, Batnas they, that they stopped up a window with an earthenware jug, tied a cup with a rush to ascertain, ascertain whether a vat had an aperture of a hand breadth or not. And from their words, we learn that we may not stop up, measure, and tie on Shabbos. We may. Right. Well, I'm very a mock mirror about this stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> we may stop up. Okay, we may stop up and tie up on the Shabbos. Okay, all right, that's it. Well, how do you know that from Shabbos? Okay, Erebin. Oh, you didn't tell me we were doing Erebin. I didn't know we were doing it, Erebin. Did you mention it? You didn't mention it yesterday, did you? No, I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember if I mentioned okay, so it. Let me get. Let me get it out. Okay. Uh, right. So uh, Mishnah Aleph is um, if we're talking about uh, Mavoy and making an Eruv, ma making a Shituf Mavos. Um, so uh, a, a an alleyway is, uh, is is an area between a whole bunch of uh, different buildings, as you can imagine it. And um, and he has a situation where where people want to close it off so that they're allowed to carry uh, into the alleyway, alleyway, carry inside the alleyway. And and carry from it from the houses into the alleyway and um, and back. Okay, so Mavoi Shehu Gavua Le Malam Eshim Ama Yema Eight. So if the entrance, in other words, if the um, if the entrance to the uh, to, to the alleyway has a, has a cross beam that's higher than twenty amas, um, then you have to you have to bring it lower so that it's um, so so that it is visible. So we see this also in the halachas of sukkah, okay, that, 20, that, that a sukkah that's higher than 20 amas uh, is not valid. You can't see because it's not clear right. that, that you're getting that you're seeing the schach. So the same thing over here is that um, is that the chachamim are saying that that the crossbar has to be in a in a, in a spot that's that's visible to to the normal you know to people when they're normally looking around. So it makes an interesting uh, an, an interesting point over here. Is that uh, first of all? Let's see Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. He says, "Ain't not He says, "Doesn't matter. You don't have to bring it down because even if it's even if it's higher, it's uh, it's it's okay." Um, some say that his reasoning is because um, the, uh, the 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 kore is not there for a hekir. It's not there for a visible reminder that you're in it. It's a it's it just needs to be a divider between that and the rishon sarabim. Okay and and you see the the Korah as if it's uh, as if it uh, comes down and closes like a good a good a good asik. What's asik, it called? Right. Um, that's called. Okay, um, and the um, but interestingly, the Chachamim say that uh, the agree agree that if he has that if it is um, if it is very decorated, very prominent, visu uh, visually prominent. Um, that it's uh, that it's, that it's okay, okay even if it is higher than twenty amas because you know people will see it even though it is uh, much higher. So there's no mention about in, about the twenty amas in in Hanukkah, I don't think. 
people in build apartment buildings and stuff like that. There's no. Uh, yes, there is. Yes, the there absolutely is. Twenty amas. We we definitely do bring that in 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 Hanukkah. If your apartment is more than twenty amas uh, amas from the street, then there's no then there's no benefit by putting the the, the menorah in the window. But it's it's not, it's not right. There's no benefit, but there's it doesn't say that you can't do it. No, there's nothing wrong with doing it. But if you have you to choose between else. putting it in a window, let's say let's say your choice is that the window that overlooks the Rishos Harabim is like in in some little back room that people don't uh, don't see much, or you can choose to put it on your on your table, and then the people in the house will see it all the time. And you should rather put it on the table in your house. House, oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so back to Erevin. Um, if um, if an alleyway is wider, or the entrance way to the alley is is wider than than 10 amas you might then you have to reduce it because it's uh because this is it's too wide to be recognizable as an entrance to uh to an alley however if you have made a doorway over it even though it's wider than than 10 amas and then there's no need to uh, to reduce it interestingly if you see the air of poles that are that are around the city Right, right. Those are much more than ten amas apart. Okay, but why? Because it's Teresa Pesach, two poles and uh, poles so. The when you got right. two poles and a cross and a cross beam, that's uh, that's considered uh, that's considered a Teresa Pesach. So then it doesn't matter how wide it is, and that's uh, and that's considered a, a division. Okay. So when we're talking about about this, uh, we're talking about where your entrance way only has a cross beam. And you don't have, and you don't have the the sides. This, um, and then, then it's then if we're if you're then it has to be less than uh, up to 10, 10 amas wide. Okay. Mishnah base comes and says, mavoy. How do you prepare the mavoy? Uh, so they say you need um, a lechi, which is a side, uh, which is a vertical, one vertical beam on the on on the side, and a and a cross beam. And that's how you designate the entrance to the alleyway. lechi or You don't need both. They say base hillel. You need one or the other. Okay. Rabbi Eliezer omer lechayayin. Rabbi Eliezer requires two poles, two uprights. Um, and, he, and, he, and he doesn't really. And he, he says he doesn't really care that you need uh, if you have a if you have a cross beam or not, as long as the entrance looks like a, like an entrance. Mishum Rabbi Shmuel Amar Tamid Echad Lifnei Rabbi Akiva Lo Nechluku Beis Shamo Beis Hilal Al Mavoi Shehu Pachos Me Arba Amos. So Beis Hilal and Beis Shamo weren't arguing over a Mavoi where the entrance is less than Dalad Amos because that's a that's a very narrow entrance way. Shu Belechi Or Bekore. Even Beis Shamo concede that either a Lechi or a Kore is enough to to demarcate the entrance to the alleyway. And Amal Nechluku. So what's Machlokes? Al Rachav Me Arba Amos Ad Eser. So it's only between four and ten amas that they have this map. Lokas shebeis shamay omrim lechi bekora, or beis hilal omrim lechi okora, or lechi okora. That's that's where they have the map. Lokas where in in that in that size between four and ten, then beis shamay say you need uh, you need both. Amar Rabbi Akiva alzev alza alze nechleku. He disagrees with the guy who came and reported to him. He says you're you're wrong. The um, what's the difference between Tanakama and Rabbi Akiva? Is that uh, in a mavoi that's uh, where, where the width is less than four amas, uh, one of them holds that uh, that you don't need a lechi or a kora, and according to the other one, um, you need a lechi, you need a lechi or a kora, but it's not clear from their words who, uh, who is who. That's uh, what the Gemara explains that there is that there is a difference between uh, between Rabbi Akiva and the Tanakama in that and respect. I, 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 so the the, the Alaka must be by the Tanakama. Well, we don't know who's saying who, who's saying what. That's right. I can't find anything here. That's no, that's, so, so, we, so, it's, so it's not clear what the what that is, um, what the halacha is there. Uh, does it say? Um, I, can, I couldn't find anything. At any rate, um, look, the, uh, the only machlokis is talking about the, the entrance that's less than four amas. Um, Chances when you have a machlokes, you know, if you follow your normal rules of sack, if it's not, if it's not clearly paskened anywhere. Um, the din of the, the din of the eruv is the um, is a din derabanan. 
-hmm. So it's uh, so if it's Suffolk uh, Suffolk Durban and you got a hot so you'll take the the more makel the more makel shita. Yeah, it says the authorities adopt the lenient view. Um, wait, so let me go back. Um, Others maintain that the basis of this opinion is, is that any opening narrower than four fists is not legally considered an entrance in such as uh, exempted by yeah. adjustments. The authorities adopt the lenient view as the, of the halakha. Since it is not based on a dispute concerning lovid, it is not affected by the stringent ru ruling there. So the Shulchan Aruch uh, cites both views without rendering a decision, but indicates one should adopt the stricter view that between three and four fists wide, the alley opening does require an adjustment. Okay. Uh, All right, Mishnah Gimel, Hakora Shamru. So the, um, the the crossbar that they're talking about, how big does a crossbar have to be? Wide enough to take a, a half brick, which is uh, which, which the, Mish, the Mishnah is going to explain now. But it's half a brick of three tvachim. Okay. So, in other words, one and a half tefachim. Daya lekorish et heirachava tefach. Enough that the width is a tefach. Kedai lekabel ariach leorko. So it can take the, so it can take the uh, that brick over its width. So, right. so, so your kora needs to be just one one tefach wide, and that's enough to designate the opening of the, of the alleyway. Right. Now, interesting because um, the kora that we use in the, the air of the city air of is just is just a wire. But uh, um, so um, um, I can't remember what's the what's the parallel, what's the difference, why why we don't require having a um, you know like beams all around that area of a tefach wide. And I don't have the, I don't have an answer for you on that. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to uh, hold that question and and see what else comes uh, comes out of the. Eruv, I haven't paid too much attention to Erevim, but. But I don't remember seeing uh, where there's where there's been a pole going. You know that's that's four across. I don't I don't remember seeing that ever. Look clearly, the halacha is that you can use a wire, right. um, as, as something as thin as a wire. So um, I wonder why. Um, I wonder why. You know, I mean, perhaps perhaps it's one of these cases where we don't hold like the we don't hold like the Mishnah. That it can just be. I don't know. Okay. okay. Um, right. Shabbos, Shabbos, Perik, uh, Perik Chav. Kofalv? Kofalv, yeah. Eliezer says, Rebbe Eliezer says, we may suspend a strainer on Yom Tov, and we may pour into a suspended one on Sabbath. But the Kokomans say, we may not suspend a strainer on Yom Tov, nor may we pour into a suspended one or on the Sabbath, but we may pour into a suspended one on Yom Tov. We may pour water over wine dregs so that they become clear, and we may filter wine through cloths or through a basket made of palm twigs, and we may put an egg into a mustard strainer. We may make a honeyed wine on the Sabbath. Rabbi Huda says on the Sabbath it may be made in a cup on Yontov. It may be made in a bottle, and I'll call the moed in a cask. Rabbi Sadek says everything depends on the number of the guests. We may not soak uh, uh, asafidia in warm water, and we may put it into vinegar. We may not soak vetches or rub them, but one may put them into a sieve or into a basket. We may not uh, sift straw with a sieve, uh, nor put on a high place so that the ch chaff will drop. But we may take it up in a sieve and pour it into the feeding trough. I thought we weren't allowed to use a strainer or a sieve on Shabbos. Um, well, the, well, that's what it's saying, is that you can't put it on the on, on, on Shabbos. Um, there was... Um, let me see. Uh, say you can't put it up you can't put up the strainer on Yom Tov and you can't put it into the, the strainer on Yom Tov you, on, on, on Yom Tov you can you can you, you can you can sort uh, borer is not is is mutar on Yom Tov right um 
so what they're saying is you can put so the Chachamim say that you can that if you have a strainer already put over the, the mouth of the barrel then you can use that to, to pour it but you can't put it there like if you have a, um, a large serving spoon a big you know for cooking and stuff like that and it has holes in it and all that's like, that's like a strainer yeah. So, you know, there's always one guest who says, no matzo balls or no, you know, vegetables for me for the chicken soup, plain broth. So now if you use that spoon, you have a problem on Shabbos. Right? Am I correct? Well, um, if you put the spoon this, into the pot and you take it out and, and but you're left with the vegetables on top and, the, you know, something like that. Well, I mean, the, the, it's not a, the, 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 you're talking about a regular spoon ladle, a regular soup ladle. A soup ladle, but it has holes in it. Why would it have holes in it? We have we have some things that um, it's not really a soup ladle. It's it's used for, uh, for like straining things out, you know. Um, well, that you can't use on Shabbos for sure. Right, right. That's what I thought. Right. So that's like a that's like a sieve, though, isn't it? The same. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a key that's that's specially designed for sorting things. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, Dalit base. I like everything in my soup, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Dalit base in Shabbos. No, right? right? Yeah. Okay, here we are, right here, my tissue. We may insulate hot food with pelts and we may move them with wood shearings, wool shearings, geez, but we may not move them. What should one do? He removes the lid and they fall. If Elazar Ben says he tilts the box on its side and removes the food, lest he removes the pot and I am able to replace it. But the comments say he may remove it and replace it. If he did not cover it when it was yet day, he may not cover it after dark. If he covered it and it became uncovered, he may cover it. One may fill the bottle and render it um, and place it under a, a cushion or under a bolster. Okay. With what may an animal go out with what may not with what may it not go out with? A camel may go out with a curb. A uh, dormitory with a nose ring, a Libyan ass with a bit, a horse with a neck chain, and all that where and all that where a neck chain may go out with a neck chain and may be pulled with a neck chain. And we may sprinkle upon them and immerse them in their place. Okay. Uh, one That's more it? base. Yeah. I thought I oh, didn't know base. That's it. A donkey may go out with a saddlecloth when it is tied to it. Rams may go out strapped. Ewes may go out exposed, tied, or covered up, and she goats may go out with the udders tied. Rabbi Yossi forbids all of them except the ewes covered up. Rabbi Yehuda says she goats may go out with their udders and tied to dry up, but not for the milk. Okay. Okay, that was everything. And we are on. Um, Thomas. Thomas. Yes, Bob. Figs, grapes, cucumbers, gourds, melons, or musk melons that have been gnawed, even if they're as much as a key car, whether large or small, whether detached or attached, if they contain moisture, they are forbidden. Bitten by a snake, it is forbidden because of the danger to life. A wine strainer is forbidden because it is uncovered, but Reb Nechamia permits this. Funny how we're dealing with the wine with the wine strainer in two different contexts over here. Uh, is, is, is it considered a kisoy to prevent it, uh, the wine from becoming asr because of giloy? Mm -hmm. so. If a doubt of uncleanliness arose concerning a jar of truma, Reb Eliezer says, if it was lying on an exposed place, it should put it in a hidden place. If it was uncovered, it should cover it. But Reb Yehuda, uh, Yeshua says, if it lay in a hidden place, it, he should put it in an exposed place. And if it was covered, he should uncover it. Dabba Gamil says, let him do nothing about it. Next is Mikvos. Mikvos. Based outlet. I decided not to go to the mikvah today. I'm just too concerned about. Mm -hmm. you know, I think you said you know what the eight you know is uh, if you don't go to mikvah. Something I don't know, I have to remember now. Something about the bath or in the shower, yeah. Right. So you can if you if you basically stand under the stand under the the shower. Um, with the running over your head, um, no, to the count of what you needed to basically get four. Uh, how many? Sorry, how many liters of water was it? Um, 
hang on, it was nine. I mean, gosh, we're in the class over here right now. Um, there was um, nine logim. I think it. I think. I think. I think it was nine logim or something of um, of my children. Basically, if you stand under the shower and count to, uh, for a full minute, that that's pro, that's uh, sort of a a, a um, substitute for going to make for for a full minute. Okay, good. I remember you said that one time. I remember yeah. I learned it, but you, you said it a couple of months ago, maybe. I don't know. Uh, a full minute. Okay. Yeah, I just I'm too. I think it's not a good idea. I don't know. You mentioned you might go though. I don't know. You said I went to Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, it was it was um, there, there wasn't uh, there wasn't much going on you know there were, it was like four or five people at the time I went it was really? clean enough. I used to go I used to go the first thing right after davening because I wanted to get there before the crowds. Yeah, so not nothing to do with COVID. That's right. That was my habit of going. Yeah. There. Or else, uh, if you wait too late in the day, then if you take a stick, you can swirl it around in the mikveh and get a strimal out. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Reb Elias is um, Dalit. Oh, hey, Dalit. Reb Elias says one revius of drum water disqualifies a mikvah at the beginning, but three lugum went on the surface of the water. But the sages say both at the beginning and at the end of three lugum. If a mikvah has three hollows and each containing one log of drawn water, when it is known that 40 saw of valid water had already fallen into the mikvah before they reach the th third hollow, it is valid. Otherwise, it is invalid. Reb Shimon declares it valid because it is like one mikvah next to another. And if one moved mud to the sides and three lugum of water drained out of it, it is valid. However, if he removed it and three lugum drained out of it, it is invalid. But Reb Shimon declares it valid because he had no intention to draw the water. Okay. That thing with the, um, it's just, I'm just curious about this. Um, the thing with the waiting for a minute under the water, would that hold for women also? Or it's just for men. No, this this is only for men. This is it's not it's a it's a um, it's it's a minhag that we got to make for on on Arab Yom Kippur. Uh -huh. Whereas for women, it's a it's a it's an it's it's a daraisa. Right, right, that's true. So, yeah. All right, we are in Kulin, um, Alaf Dalit. Yeah. If one slaughters from the sides, his slaughtering is valid. If one performs mikvah from the uh, mikvah. Malika from the sides, his Malika is invalid. If one slaughters from the nape, his slaughtering is invalid. And if one performs Malika from the nape, his Malika is valid. One slaughters from the throat, his slaughtering is valid. And if one performs Malika from the throat, um, his Malika is invalid. Because the entire nape is valid for Malika and the entire throat is valid for slaughtering. Thus, what is valid for slaughtering is invalid for Malika and what is valid for Malika is invalid for slaughtering. What is fit for turtle doves is unfit for young pigeons, but what is fit for young pigeons is unfit for turtle doves. <clears throat> Excuse me. The beginning of the ye yellowing is both, uh, in both is unfit. What is valid for the red cow is invalid for the decapitated heifer. heifer. What is valid for the decapitated heifer is invalid for the red cow. in terms of the age, yeah. Uh, what is no, 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 wait, it's a shechita. It's a shechita. The para has to have a shechita, whereas the egla has to have an aripa also on the back of the neck. Yeah. What is fit for Kohanim is unfit for Levites, and what is fit for Levites is unfit for Kohanim. What is Tahor in earthenware utensils is Tomei in all other utensils, and what is Tahor in other utensils is Tomei in earthenware utensils. What is Tahor in wooden utensils is Tomei in metal utensils, and what is Tahor in metal utensils is Tomei in wooden utensils. What is subject to tithing is bitter almonds and uh, is exempt in sweet ones. What is subject for tithing and sweet ones is exempt in bitter ones. Okay. Uh, and uh, Nazir. Nazir. Hey, Bob. If he turned back suddenly, he is not a Nazir. Reb Shimon says he should say. So this is talking about the previous case. Remember when the guy was right, coming right. over the hill and they were busy laying bets that, you know, hey, that's Fred. And uh, and as says, I'll be a Nazir if that's Fred. I'll be a Nazir if that's not Fred. Oh, I'll be a Nazir if one of you two is a Nazir. Uh, you know, the, all those different things and uh, came out that uh, that you you're a Nazir if whatever you right. said comes true. If you turn now, back, now, so now the suffix comes now, the suffix comes out now when Fred or the, the possible Fred turns around and disappears and we don't know and we don't know if it's true or not. Was it was it really Fred? 
Hmm. Okay. Rabbi Shimon says he should say, if it if it was as I said, I am a Nazir by previous obligation. If not, I am a Nazir voluntarily. Right, so Rabbi Shimon is so Rabbi Shimon is is Khoshesh for the Safek. Um because it might have been Fred or it might not have been Fred. So so he says you should cover yourself. Whereas the, the Tanakama says, no need, if you've got the Safek, then the Safek is uh, doesn't make you into a Nazir. If he saw a koi and said, I am a nazir that this is a wild animal, I am a nazir that is, this is not a wild animal, I am a nazir that this is a domestic animal, I am a nazir that this is not a domestic animal, I am a nazir that this is both a wild animal and a domestic animal, I am a nazir that this is neither a wild nor a domestic animal, I am a nazir that one of you is a nazir, I am a nazir that one of you is not a nazir, I am a nazir that all of you are nazir, all of you are nazir. So all these cases, all these cases are nazirim, which is a little different from the from the Fred case. Uh, why are all of them in Nazirim? This is um, according to Beis Shammai, they're all Nazir Vadai because uh, Nazir is Taos, as we saw before. They, the Suffolk, they, we said Suffolk Hekdesh, Suffolk uh, Nazir, Suffolk, all of the, all, any, any, sorry, it's a Taos. A Taos in, um, in Hekdesh, they said, is, uh, is, is Kodesh. Uh, but Beis Hillel say that, um, that uh, we, uh, according to Rabbi Shimon, we have a Nazira Safek. So, um, so according to so, so some say that according to Beis Hillel, everyone is a Vada Nazir, since the Koi has aspects of both of, of both Bahama and Chaya. Right. Um, so it's possible to interpret all these words that, so that it comes as that it comes out to be accurate. So it's not like, hey, that's Fred. Um, because either he is Fred or he isn't Fred, but the but the koi is a bit like a behemo and a bit like a chaya, and a bit not like a behemo, but not like a chaya. So all of these so all of these words are actually true, which is why every one of them becomes a becomes a nazir. Okay. Three matters are forbidden to a nazir: tuma, head shaving, and products of the grapevine. All products of the grapevine may be combined with one another, and he is not liable until he eats an olive's bulk of grapes. According to the earliest Mishnah, earlier Mishnah, until he drinks a revise of wine. Rabbi Akiva says, even if he soaks his bread in wine and uh, there is um, not, and there is enough to add up to an olive's bulk, he is liable. He is liable for wine by itself, for grapes that's by it. themselves. That's it, that's it. That was it. We've okay. done three. All right. You know, I, I was at uh, the best market yesterday, and I was looking at. I spoke to Effie about the um, Otsaha 